I want to please encourage you not to be discouraged by any circumstance. At a stage in your life, you must learn to trust and believe God more than any physical thing you see. And your reason for believing God is because God said it, not because you see it. You must learn to believe God for what he says more than what he sees, what you see. There are many things today that you will see in your life manifest very soon. But your attitude from now will determine how soon they will manifest. If God has told you something, and because you are going through a tough time now, you start to misbehave, you will never see that. You will never see it. Though God said it to the creator of the heavens and the earth, that your hands will touch it. Why? Because you are maltreating your future with your behavior. But let me not sidestep myself this morning. Let me go straight to what I want to discuss about. Now, you want to remember that we've been having a conversation on the subject of social capital. Somebody say social capital. And lasting relationships. And the idea behind it is that we've been speaking to the fact that your life is for a purpose. God made you a world changer. Made you to make a difference. Made you to be an influence. And made you on this earth to change this world. The essence of your being present and alive today. Every day you see another day is not another chance to eat shawarma. It's another chance for you to make impact. There are people that are alive and there are people that are living. Those that are living are the ones making contact with the world. They are making impact. You know, they are making contact, making impact. If you are not changing somebody, somebody is changing you. Believe it or not, if you are not changing someone, someone is changing. If you are not changing something, something is changing you every, every day. And I'm saying here categorically that God made us so that we will be what I call difference makers. Say after me, say difference makers. Say it properly, say difference makers. Say world changers and influencers. That's God's plan. That you and I should make a difference. That you should make a difference. Don't take yourself casually. In this life, there are givers and there are takers. This life actually answers to those that give. Listen to me. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's not just money. You can give. It's not only money you can give. Can I hear your amen to that? Yes. Some people can give trouble. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to let you know it's not only money. You can give many things. But the Bible says in Acts 20, 35 that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Your life is supposed to be a giving life. Today in this service, it's my prayer that you are going to have a great time in Jesus' name. I say you are going to have a great time in Jesus' name. The plan in, of this service is that you should have fun feel valued and experience God. That's my plan. That you'll have plenty of fun, you'll feel plenty of value, and you'll experience God. I said Acts 20, 35. Praise God. So, I want to draw your attention to it again, that this service, as we wrap it up, is to point your heart to God's original plan. Now listen to me. See after me. Say, I am a person of value. I said Acts 20, 35. You hear me? So, say it again to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, you are a person of value. Can you help me do it a little better than that? Say, you are a person of value. Say, I believe that I have value. And I believe that you also have value. Help me look at the other neighbor. Say, you have some value. Now, why am I bringing that to our attention again? It's to remind us that although you may have started your life very weak and lean, listen to me. There is something about your life that God planned for. You may have started casually, but you are not a casualty. You may have started, you know, accidentally, but you are not an accident. God intentionally buffered you in that family so that the values that God can transmit to you through that family will be transmitted to you. And there are things that in that family you lacked. You were growing up. It was not your fault. Your dad did not have it better. Your dad did not know it better. Everybody does his best in his life. Let me just tell you, you have Everybody's trying his best to do right, just to succeed, make a headway. You are the one that thinks that they are bad people. As far as God is concerned, God does see them as desperate. See, listen to me. Every 
body. Everybody is trying their best. If they know better, they will do better. Am I making some sense? That's why you should not look at someone and despise anybody. Everybody is truthfully from their heart, meaning the best for themselves. And some people are so desperate that they don't mind killing people just to succeed. It's their success that they're looking for. Now, you think that they are bad people, but look at it well. What they are looking for is their own interest. Now, what I'm saying is that that interest, you are not different from them if you don't use your own interest or your own capacity for the good. You are not different. You have just not yet had the bravery to kill anybody or the desperation to get there. Don't tell me you are not a thief until the opportunity proves that you are not. Are you ready for today's sentence? Let me well. Let me talk. Listen to me. There is a life that you are supposed to live. And in the success of that life, you need some element of desperation. You need some element of commitment. Can I have some juice on this mind? So I don't stress myself after the service. So you need to have a clear picture. Not too much. Just reduce it a little. It's too loud. Thank you. Now you need to have a clear picture of why God has made you here. And we started by saying that you are a person of value. You are a person of purpose. We said all that and we drew the conversation to say the reason God made you so valuable is so that you can make a difference in the earth. God will not just invest your life, just pour so much blessing on you, give you so much background, give you so much front ground, give you so much relationship just for nothing. There is a purpose, there is a reason behind what God has invested in you. Do you know, like I said on Wednesday last week, that you could have been a giraffe you could have been a giraffe. Just long neck, like, just go around. Just go around. And inside the giraffe body is a human being's mind. You could have been a giraffe. God did not make you a giraffe. I said last week that God made the queen, made the president, and made you. Because after he made everybody, this world was still incomplete. You had to come. There must be a reason. It can't just be to be a consumer. It can't just be. We also said, if you remember, that it can't just be so that you marry. It can't just be so that you marry. Marriage is therefore not a purpose. It is a means to a purpose. If you are marrying a woman just because you like her, without considering purpose in mind, you will soon be frustrated. Let me tell you something. That you are, we are talking this talk and you are listening at this level of our capacity now is because you are blessed. God is giving you a chance. And that's how many people are. Early in life, you hear some of our parents say to us, Ah, I wish that I had gone abroad. Some of us know it now. You hear your parents say that. My, and my, one of my friends said, we should try to take you abroad though. I just said no, that Nigeria is the same thing. If only they had known that there was a future, they would have done better. Am I making some sense? There is a purpose why your life is here. There is a purpose. That you don't know it does not mean that there's no purpose. That you don't know it does not mean there's no purpose. That you met someone, and I told you that the purpose of every contact is impact. When you meet someone, it's for a reason. I told you also, don't cut relationships. Let them go. There's a difference between cutting something and let it flow. Don't worry. There are many relationships that you think you've cut. I don't need you again. I don't, you will need that relationship. You will need it because relationships are bridges. And at some point in life, the connecting point between point A and B is not a road, it's a bridge. You have to understand these things. That's why we are speaking about social capital. Where you are in your social capital. There are things in this life that it's not only money that will do it for you. There are blessings of life that money can buy and there are blessings of life money cannot buy. Yeah. There are people that all they have in a business is their name. Just put my letter ahead. I know of a man, all he does is give you his card. That card, I don't know why he believes they cannot forge the card. But the once he gives you his card, uh -huh, okay, he used to put his signature, that's true. He will put his signature. Once he does that, the doors are opening. You have not finished talking. It is, um, enter. oh, is it the one? Why? Oh, yeah, enter, enter. Why? Capital. 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 Every sense of, and I'm going to get into it now, you have to understand, whatever you are building is capital. When you talk about integrity, is capital. Honesty, is capital. Can we find a man so faithful? Is capital. You that they will give 5,000, you won't bring back change. Is capital you are losing. The day that they will remember, who can we trust? You have lost something. In the boardroom, when we are thinking about who to promote, you are not part of them. Because every action is an investment. Every action is saying something. Look at it. Every time I show up here, I'm telling you something. I'm serious with God's work. Every time 
I preach to you, you can know I studied before I came to your presence. Every time I talk to you, you know I'm talking to a congregation larger than this. Because I need to show I am qualified for that promotion I'm trusting God for. Some of us don't know it. You just think that I will bring back your car. I'll bring back your cup. You said that I'll bring back your cup four years ago. You said I'll bring it back next week. Up to now, it's four years. You've not brought it. Capital. You know what you just done? You just overdrawn your capital. The person might not talk, might not complain, but you have overdrawn your capital. He said, I'll come to your house. I'm coming by four. You didn't come. Continue. We're getting into that very soon. I will try. I hope I can close it up. So we need to look at why this capital discussion in the first place. Because your capital is what God has given you on this earth to succeed. That's what I'm saying. Without capital, you can't start anything. Am I making some sense? You hear some people, well, you know, I've gone into business. I don't have capital. It's true. It's just I don't need financial capital. It's what money can do that money is valuable for. Money is not useful by itself. It's what it can do. Am I making some sense? Yeah. You want to start a business. It's not money you put on the business. You put money on the floor. <laughs> That's not the it's that you want to buy a shop. You want to buy property. You want to do things. So, it's not money you need. It is what money can buy. Therefore, if somebody has what you want to buy with money, you have gotten capital. What you would have bought with money, you could have bought it with relationships. Are we making some sense here? So, you need to start to broaden your mind that every action you are taking is adding up for your value. Everything you are doing is adding up to your person. But that value you are getting or gaining is not just an end in itself. It is for a greater purpose. It is so that you can affect lives. It is so that you can make a difference. It is so that you can change the world. Uh, can I hear an amen on this matter here? Having said that, we initiated ourselves into a lot of conversations. You need to catch up online and know what we're talking about. But last week, Wednesday, I introduced what I called five laws of influence. Now, before I go into that, I want to quickly say one or two things again. Just perhaps I don't over, I mean, skip over some very important part of what I should talk about. Now, I said that relationships are very, very, you know, sensitive. And you need to understand that some of us, while we're growing as a little child, you may have gone through some deprivation. Do you know what I mean by deprivation? Yes. Maybe you didn't watch enough television as a child. Now that you are adult, you are watching too much television. You know what they call that? It's called overcompensation. What I mean to say is that some of us are overcompensating ourselves for what we were deficient of. So, for example, maybe in your previous relationship, you lacked appreciation. You now see a lady just appreciated you once. You are now believing this is the woman of God for your life. What you are doing is that you are overcompensating for the deficit of the previous relationship. That person does not have to be the person. In other words, what that lady that was not appreciating you well, are you getting what I'm saying, please? If you are flowing with my mind and my thoughts, can I hear your amen, please? Yeah. So, what that lady that you were dating before did not have may just be one aspect of her life. Doesn't mean that this one has everything you need. But because of what you lacked, you start to look for that one item in anybody that can show it to you. And once you find it, you believe this person is the right person. That's not necessarily true. Otherwise, you will get what we call what? <laughs> buyer's remorse. You know what they call buyer's remorse? Are you hearing these words? These words are professional languages, though, but you need to use them in social space. When you say to your guy, buyer's remorse, you will hear what he will tell you. He will say, who taught you? Because what I just taught you now is a very high-level professional language. Buyer's remorse. Everybody say buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse means that you got something and after getting you started to regret it. That's how some of us enter into a relationship. The relationship looked very promising, but you got into it and it started to look disappointing. It's called buyer's remorse. It's called relationship disappointment. Now, I'm saying that because in making a relationship last, there will be certain things you will not like in that relationship, whichever the relationship, because that person too is not perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people that you will see that may be finer than your girlfriend, finer than your fiancé. What do you want to do? You'll be changing once you see a fine girl. Are you not an irrational person? You can't do that. So there are certain standard consistent levels of satisfaction a normal person should have. There are some things, and I said one of them should be that don't compromise your sexual preference 
I said to you that your relationship should cherish pride, peace, passion, and purpose. Do you remember these things I said? Go and watch them again. They are all on record. Your relationship should cherish pride, peace, passion, and purpose. Some ladies don't give passion. They don't have any kind of passion to your life. They don't have it. It's not that they don't want to give it. They are not passionate about anything. And that is disaster going somewhere to happen. That's disaster because as a man or as anybody for that matter, you want to do something meaningful with your life. And the person who can value the most is the likely person that you will need around you to support you to destiny. Am I making some sense? So you need to introduce some passion. Somebody who is excited and animated about anything that concerns you. you do you know what I'm saying? When it matters to you, when your name comes up, the person is up on the matter. No, no, no. Eh, what do you want to say? Ah. I'm talking about my life. You sound like this. Even if you don't have money, you should have energy for me. Praise God. Praise God. So don't compromise it. You need peace, pride, passion, and purpose. Peace, pride, passion, and purpose. Don't forget. If you don't have it already, start to introduce it into it. Do I have peace with this lady? Can I trust that when I'm traveled, she will not be looking around? Does she have stability of character? Does she give me pride? Am I proud of her beauty? Is she fine enough? Glory to God. So you know what I'm talking about? Don't compromise it. You know you're a public figure. Don't be compromising once. You must make up your mind and make progress. Can I hear your amen, please? Some of you don't know what agaracha means. Say, Pastor, which one is How do you agaracha again? I know all things. Amen. <laughs> Now, on Wednesday, we spoke to the fact that there are some five, so I spoke about overcompensation. I also want to say something before I go into the, continue the five laws. You see that I'm trying to really pour myself into you guys so that there is no chance. Yeah, I also said here that you should know when to make your relationships evolve. Evolve. You must know how to evolve. As you are ladies here, some of you are just coming out of 21. You know, fine, yeah, fine, yeah, no, fine. it's good though. Don't stop your fine girl. But guess what? You must evolve. You must evolve. The girl must become a lady. The lady must know when to evolve to become a woman. The woman must know when to evolve to become a mother, a wife. The wife must know when to evolve to become a, mo a, a mother. And the mother must know when to evolve to become a grandmother. There is a stage. Nobody will announce to you, Baga, Baga, change your blessing. No, 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 no. Nobody will do that to you. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? Your, the kind of things you pay attention. Are you listening to me or you are looking at your phone? Please look up now. Eh? It's respect. It's respect. I can't be talking, sweating like I am using phone to do me. It's very wrong. I will fight you. I don't bow down. It's rude. Eh? So, listen. There, you, nobody's going to come and start to announce to you. Baga, baga, you must grow now. No. As a man, you must know when it is time to leave that job. And get your own business going on. Nobody will come and tell you. Even your boss might know that it's time for you to go, but he can't tell you. Because there is a compass in every man that should navigate him to his destiny. And if you ignore it, you will never know what time it is to, for your life. You just keep serving. I'm an employer. I work in that place. Whereas there is greatness on your inside. There is something on your inside that only you can tell. Only you, sir. Are we together this morning? Very important. So I'm speaking about not overcompensating. I'm also saying that you must know when to evolve. You must know when to evolve. Not everything needs expression. And this is true also. It's not every feeling. Somebody says, I feel like I, I, I love this guy and I feel like touching him. It's not every feeling you have that you must express. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. There are some feelings you keep. That your inability to keep it is proof that you are indisciplined or undisciplined. Now listen, the difference between lust and love is impatience of desire. Say that after me. Say the difference between love and lust is the impatience of desire. What do I mean by that? Lust can't wait. Love waits. Lust wants it now. Love says, I can get it later. Never confuse chemistry as destiny. No. That you have chemistry with someone doesn't mean that the person is destined for you. The passion might be strong. I agree. I'm not arguing. But that doesn't have to be your destiny. So you don't translate chemistry. Now, you don't want to also choose destiny without chemistry. Because that can be boring. But I'm saying don't choose chemistry as destiny. 
Then I also want to say about anger issues. Some people believe that they are not compatible or they are not together because one person is always angry. Now let me say this to you. Anger is an energy. It depends on what you use it for. There are some things in this life you will never overcome until you are angry. Yes. So anger, that's why the Bible never told us. The Bible says, be angry. Bible said, be angry, but do not sin. Did you, did you notice that it says so? So there are things that maybe you and your spouse or your date, you are arguing, you are arguing. Don't conclude that argument means that you are not compatible. Any two social beings should try to reach a reconciliation. You are even trying that you are using mouth to discuss the issue. Some people is, don't you understand what is going on here? <laughs> I mean, say, you know, you think they played the tennis. Don't you understand what I'm saying to you, to you? You understand? So that you are discussing is a sign of maturity. Don't let it be a sign of disconnection. Sometimes God's will is that both of you that are different come together. Don't let that you are talking or arguing mean that we are never compatible. It just might mean that both of you are sincere enough to make something work. Can I hear your amen? So I'm, you notice I'm trying to touch those small, small areas I've not touched. Let's go into the other things. If I forget another thing, please, God will grant us grace. We will hear it another day. Now, I want us to go back to our five laws of influence. On, two, on Wednesday, I initiated two of them. And I said that influence is what God has made us for. That you are supposed to be a person of influence. Nobody should meet you and remain the same. I said something as much as saying, how can you be in a meeting? They ask for your opinion. You say you don't have. That is bad. Don't you have a mind? That means God invested his mind poorly on you. You are, you are a clock in the matters of progress. Why should we have you there? And your mind is not working. No, 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 no. We don't need an extra mind engineer. You are just being selfish and lazy. You need to use that mind. Look at your neighbor for me. Tell the person, use your mind. Say like, though you have authority to tell the person, say, use your mind. A used mind is a developed mind. If you don't use your mind, you are underdeveloped and undervalued. Yeah. Use your mind. When people are talking, let your mind contribute to the talk. Be honest about it. That's why I was saying that sometimes you see some people not contribute because of low self-esteem. They can't talk. One fine girl like that sat in the bus from Lagos to Ibadan. One fine boy too sat in front. And all the journey, you know that kind of conversation? How are you? Beautiful girl. The girl was just smiling, smiling, smiling. So they got to Ibadan Iwo Road. The guy was going to come down. And I said, so when am I going to see you? Just broke it in Yoruba, you know, somehow. He said, so now Maria, you know, that kind of a thing. And the young girl said, she saw no lost my Risa. So as beautiful as she was, she was an illiterate. She was hiding under low self-esteem, not answering that guy. She was very happy, was talking, but her low self-esteem cannot make her respond. That you are quiet does not mean you are intelligent. Though. I don't mean that to insult you. That you are not talking does not mean you have something big to say. This your behavior might be that you are low self-esteem. You know when your shoe is not good, you'll be crossing your legs. You know what I'm saying? You'll be hoping that nobody says, let's sit down and pray. <laughs> what kind of prayer point are we praying at? You'll be praying that every throughout you are standing on two feet if you have holes in your shoes. Or if you have holes in your socks, you pray that nobody says, let's remove our shoe. Ah. Pastor, why do I have to remove our shoe? You know what I'm talking about here? Low self-esteem can make people look comported. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should be rowdy because you have good self-esteem. I'm only saying many things are hidden under silence. That you are not talking doesn't mean you are good, sir. I mean that sincerely. And I don't mean it rudely. I'm only saying... Be sure that you are not hiding low self-esteem under silence or an attitude. Yeah. Then I'm also saying that intentionality is good. God made us to have influence. I told us of a story on Wednesday about a woman, a man, a gentleman who wanted to commit suicide. It's a true story. This story was told by the psychiatrist of that man. This man was going to commit suicide and as he was going, he drove by the road and he saw an elderly woman by the side of the road and the woman just smiled at him. You know, just smiled. And the curve of that smile straightened many things in the guy's life. There are some curves that will straighten things out. Very true. The curve of a distant man, just a smile. Ever say a smile. Do you know how many people you have smiled at today in this service? Do you know what you might have changed? 
just because of his smile. The thing about that was that that woman influenced this guy, but it was not intentional. But what I'm saying now is that influence as a law is effective when it is intentional. Don't be the person to be influenced all the time. Some of us enjoy staying behind television all day long. Have you ever thought about those that are inside the television? Where would you be part of them? Switch roles. Someday it should bother you that they have been talking to me in television. Let me to talk to somebody. When will they call you and say, come and enter television, let's show you. When even here, they say you should enter camera, you don't want to enter camera. Come and do back up, you don't want to do back up. Listen to me, you were born for the stage. You were born for greatness. Stop hiding. Stop hiding, you are growing older. Don't think there's a tomorrow. What you cannot do today, you might not do tomorrow. Why postpone it? You say maybe when there's another chance. Days are going, people are getting older. I'm telling you, sir, young people are rising every day. Every day. You can't force that because you are old, you are wise. Even fools grow old. So I'm simply saying, the law of intentionality helps you render your influence intentionally. You look at somebody and what we are saying is that you deliberately start to influence the person. Your value grows with people. Somebody is getting better because you are around. Somebody is getting wiser because you are around. Somebody is living better because of your wisdom. You have to be intentional, not mistake. Otherwise, you are going to be generating value without knowing the value you have been generating. If you are not intentional. That woman, for example, maybe that guy went back to go and look for her. But she's no longer there because she was not intentional about what she did. When you deliberately influence people intentionally, you are building capital for your life. Did you hear what I just said? You are making a difference. You are changing your world. Don't go anywhere and people will not remember you. Don't live anywhere without an impression. Don't go without a perfume. Don't go without a memory. Drop a coat. Show an attitude. Leave a gift. Do something meaningful. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Be very intentional. Be very intentional. Don't make any mistake about it. You say people should just like me for me. Be intentional to make people like you. Be intentional. We're coming to that. Number two, I said influence, the second law of influence is access. That you cannot influence people when they don't give you access. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. You remember that scripture? Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come inside. If you don't open, I cannot come inside. So even Jesus needs access into our lives. If Jesus, the son of God, needs access to be able to change people's lives, you need access. If people don't give you access into their lives, they will rebuff you. There was a man of God who said he was talking with someone and then while this guy came, he said, I want you to be my mentor, I want you to be my mentor. And then the gentleman sat across the table and while this pastor was talking to this young man, the young man started to get an attitude. Started to get irritated. I said, who are you to be counseling me? You can't counsel people if they don't give you access. You can't change anybody if they don't say, come ahead and change me. And that's why it is important that since influence will be intentional, you must know how to get access in the heart of people. Now listen to this. Access is like a door. Doors, are we together this morning? Doors are not necessarily walls. Doors are blockades. And they are not necessarily against you. Doors simply say that there is something valuable here that you will need access to. Understand that everybody has his own emotional door. If you must influence people intentionally, you must knock on their door. You must knock on what? Their emotional door. You want to influence people. You want to make significance. You must know how to access people's hearts. How to access people's lives. Now listen to this. Proverbs 18, 16 says that a man's gift will make room or open doors for him. When you want to access people's lives, you know doors can be opened on two sides. One side, somebody opens for you from inside and or you open the door because you have the key. Am I making some sense? If you are going to ever access people's lives, it's because you have a key or access through inside or outside. Now, if you are going to go to someone's life or you want to access someone's life, one of the best things you can do is to go with a gift. A gift will almost always, underline what I said, almost always open doors. 
You want to toast a sister? Don't go to say sister. How are you? I want to see you. No, okay. Did they not teach you something? You lack capital for social relationship. You see, what I'm saying in essence is that capital there or access as it were will be easier for you through gifts. You give a gift. Now, I'm, not, I'm serious about this now because some people think that it's, if it's going to open his door, no, 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 no. You want something? Show your deliberation. Show that it's deliberate. Give a gift. Now, the other way to get access into people's lives is through their interests and their needs. In, I am. Interests and their needs. When you know what somebody is interested in, then you assess the person based on his interest. There was the story of this young man. He was going to be sent forth from his organization. And then suddenly, his boss said to him, I'm going to miss you because we will no longer have someone to discuss Arsenal gist with. His other boss said, no, James is not Arsenal. He's man you. You know what he has been doing? He has been giving each person his interest. Each person, you man you, up on you, up Arsenal, up Arsenal. You must know how to meet people on the point of their interest. Did you get the story at all? Let's say a big amen there. So some people know it better. You must be flexible. Now, that might be duplicitous, duplicitous, but essentially the learning means that you must know how to relate to people on their interest. What interests this person? What needs do they have? You want to gain access? Do you have solution to their needs? If you want to even preach the gospel, don't start by saying, let me tell you about my Jesus. Tell them, tell me about your Islam. Start with that. We don't understand this. Thing. So people create walls against us. When you talk walls, you don't meet in walls instead of doors. From today, you will open doors in Jesus. So we are simply saying there is a way to gain in access to people's hearts. There's a way to gain in access. And I'm saying find out their interest, find out their needs. Find out their interest, find out their needs, or take a gift along with you. Does this bless our hearts this morning? I almost can assure you, it might not work all the time, but almost all the time it will work. Yes. When you approach someone with his interest, talk about what he's interested in. Some of us who are talking with the sister, you are talking what she's not interested in at all. As a sister, you like a brother. Don't go and be flaunting yourself and say, let's make some love. It's not by love. Prostitutes offer love. It is relationships through intelligent conversations. Find the guy's interest. Find the guy's need. I'm telling a woman now how to make a man open his heart towards you. Yes. Yes. Go carefully. Find his interest. Service that interest. Not manipulative. Not with manipulation. But with sincerity. Be authentic about it. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? You were born to make influence. There's no need to pretend about it. Number three. So we said here that inf access is usually given to people that are givers more than those that are takers. If you are a giver, more influence will be given to you. If you are all about take me, give me, give me, what can I get from you? What can I get from you? You are making a mistake. If I, I went ahead in my notes to write down that oh, don't see application for visa as a wall. See it as an access into a country. Your attitude of seeing things as a wall will make you have the attitude of fighting. You don't have to be grumpy about things. Everything is working in your favor. You are a first class citizen. Can I hear your believing amen? amen? Am I preaching to the right church this morning? I say you are a first class citizen, sir. Amen. There's something about your life that cannot be resisted. So don't approach everybody like a wall. Everybody wants to help you. The country wants to give you visa. Stop thinking that they are going to bounce you. You have what it takes to travel. I'm helping someone here big time. Some of us just believe in our minds that they know you personally and they don't want you to come to their country. They don't know you, sir. They don't know you. You are not yet that important yet. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They are not victimizing you. They are not victimizing Is that if you knock the door and you pay the access, you will get the door. Why do I know you are getting your visa next time you apply? You are getting that visa in the name of Jesus Christ. You are getting that open door in the name of Jesus that job is not against you. That interview is not against you. That relationship is not against you. You are going to get that job. You are going to open that door. You are going to walk through that door. I speak prophetically as God's servant, socially before you in Jesus' name. 
Say better, amen. The third law of influence that we are speaking about today is very simple. It's the law of relationships. Relationships are bridges. You cannot influence people when you are distant from them. After they've granted you access and they've allowed you into their life, you need to know how to relate with people. See people as bridges and as useful connections. They are not an end in itself. Don't believe you must exhaust every relationship of the value credential they give you. The first relationship you have because you now have access, all you are asking for is give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, because my name is Jimmy. No, you must know how to be patient. Let relationships count for something. And you get what I'm saying. Be patient. Know that this relationship has opened up to you now. Keep it valuable. Keep it valuable. Let relationships matter to you. Don't just be after getting. You see the Yorubas that said, in your last shot, they know what they are saying. Relationships sometimes can give you more than what money can give you. I'm telling you, sir. How many of us watched the film I told you to watch last week? Some of you very stubborn. You will never do what they tell you to do. Even if the Holy Ghost comes and says, watch him, watch very stubborn you. You won't hear. What will I do? I will agree. I won't force you to your destiny. Because I wanted to use an illustration from you now. I've been telling you now that you're not getting it. Relationships are important. Through a connection, you can open vital connections. This is your prayer. Oh Lord, oh Lord, all the struggle that is killing my family is relationship you need. All that prayer is to translate you to meet someone that will open more doors. What is your prayer? Oh Lord, oh Lord, every spirit of delay, every spirit of delay. Oh, the time. If you meet the right person, you will enter destiny. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, do something. Holy Ghost, you must do something. You must. Do. He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything. Holy Ghost, you must do something. You must do something. You must do something. He's, I'm not doing anything. Because the prayer you are praying is for your enemies to die. Which enemy do you have? Why are you so conscious of them? Are they not friends in your lives? Why are you not conscious of the friends? Why are you just going to enemy, enemy, enemy? That's why they are multiplying. Glory to God. So we are saying this morning, you must be very intentional to keep relationships. There are things that are very vital about relationships. I, I, I think I wrote something down that might be worthy of my memory here. My message note is finished from this teaching. <laughs> I need a new message note. <laughs> oh, praise God. So God wants you to have vital and meaningful relationships. Don't just throw people away. Use relationships as connecting nerves. Use them as bridges. God wants you to use them to succeed. Find very important relationships in your life. Yeah. Okay. So the next law I want to go to today, I'll talk about relationships some more because there are some things I don't want to forget to cover. The next law of influence, among the five laws of influence, this will be number four, is the law of credibility. Everybody say credibility. Help me say loud and clear. Say credibility. Say it again one more time. I want it loud and clear. Say credibility. If you are going to ever successfully influence people and make them favor your righteous cause as it were, you must understand that you must be a person of credibility. If you go back to the law of access, people naturally give access to people they trust. No matter the time they come to your house. Uh -uh. If my music director comes to my house, even 2 o'clock in the night, before I talk too long, first of all, interface. Do you understand? Access will be given to trust. So what you need to do is because there's a deficit of trust globally, you must build that capital called trust through credibility. How credible you are, people are more likely to respond to people that they know they can trust. Am I making some sense? That's why you must not be the first person to pack your load from that office and be going home. It's a very bad spirit because you are showing that you are not interested in being trusted. You say, ah, she'll be with close. she be with close. I'm just going to my house. You are showing bad character. We can't trust you. Listen to me. It is myopic for you to think that this thing you are doing today will be what you will do for the rest of your life. It's my own pick. 
No matter, even if you don't want to, even if you want to continue doing it, your boss will one day tell you, leave this place. So what you are doing right now is not the end of your life. You must understand that there is a reference. How you treat here is how next place will treat you. Most organizations will tell you, go and get your last reference from your last place of work. How you behave there will matter to how they will accept you here. Small thing, you pack your load and go in. You never stay extra time because you have, you have stop, stop it. You are not credible that way. You see, let's quickly talk about what can help you become more credible because of time. Number one, three things that will help you be very credible. Number one, are you ready this morning? Are you following what I'm saying, please? I can't be this loaded for you not to be able to receive it. Can you handle what I'm talking about this morning? Yeah. Say a big amen, please. One thing that you will need as to help your credibility is competence. Everybody say competence. If you do your work well, you will get more trust better. Sit up. You will do you will get better trust. You will get better responses. Do your work well. Be competent. People are likely to trust those people they know that they know what they are doing. In any field. Do you know what it means for you to look at a gentleman you've never met before? And he tells you, I am a mechanic. And you believe him. You give him your car keys to go and fix your car. Because he presents himself as being competent. You ask him, say, he calls one name for you. Ah, rotor, the one in the sensor, don't share sensor, so, so, you, you, you just get to her. One of the things that reveals competence is your professional language. Don't be talking simplistic when it's time for you to be professional. Are you this what I'm saying? There are certain things that will switch you from being ordinary to being a very serious person just because of the language you are calling it. Get tools that suggest professionalism. Don't be too simple for success. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? There's a professional language. They call two gentlemen, come and measure something. One carry the ruler. Bamunde, 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 bamunde. Drag the ruler down there. You say, ah, new hotel show. Oda Benipe 2.72. After dragging the whole community in, the other man came with a machine. Boom. This is 2.72 meters precise. The man that came that looked like he was tired and lazy, they gave him the job. Because he demonstrated more competence than the other one. Don't waste my time. You show that you know value. So your tools are objects of your competence. As a writer, let me see your pen. Let me see your jotter. Before you talk about big equipment, let me see the pen you used to write. Let me see your message notes. As a fashion stylist, let me see what you wear. As a musician, can I see your library? You have a big future. Stop treating yourself small. Though. You have to prepare before preparation asks for you. Don't forget, success happens when preparation meets opportunity. Can I hear your amen, please? Quickly, let me run. Number two thing. So, competence is very critical. Competence is very critical. People will listen to those that do their job well. Number two is character. While competence might get you a good job, you need character. The word character means the consistency of your personality when nobody's watching. Who are you? Not who who do people think you are? Who are you? People can ruin your reputation. They cannot destroy your character. Because your character is who you are. Regardless of anybody's opinion. No matter what they do, who you are remains who you are. And sometimes, let me just slide this in. For adventure, you have been maligned or been maltreated or people think of you differently. Maybe you have been called a thief in your hostel. And you know you are not a thief. Don't go around trying to explain yourself. Men are very unforgiving. Don't go weak trying to explain. Actually, it's not me that stole it. Though. It's not me. It's Romokel. Romokel put it on my locker. And I thought, don't explain. There are some things you can never change with explanation. You are even losing more credibility by trying to... People say, eh, eh, and they believe that you are the one that stole it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I want to explain to you that they believe is your conscience disturbing you. Mama, don't explain anything. Especially to people you don't trust. You can find someone you trust on earth. Now, I know you've spoken to God. But find someone on earth that can know the truth. But don't
be explained to the world. Actually, actually, there's no need. It is a perception they have. All you need to do is change that perception over time. Be consistent with your character. You know what I just said? Be consistent with your character. Don't go around trying to be, um, and then not only consistent, be authentic with your pattern. Be authentic, be consistent. Let's quickly add that in. Character requires that you are consistent over time, regardless of the pressure. Someone said this, and I agree. He said, under pressure, some people focus. Under pressure, others fold. How do you respond to pressure? You know, there was this gentleman of God that was talking. He said, he told, he was at the hotel and wanted to have breakfast. And he told the lady, can I have green tea? And the lady said, no problem. She brought a bag of tea, a tea bag, and dropped it on the table. And the man shouted, this is not green tea. The woman said, this is green tea. The woman said, this is not green tea. They had an argument and said, I will go and bring the box where this green tea is. Do you understand? And she brought the box. And yes, truly, it was a green tea box. But what was inside was not green tea. You know why? That's how many of us are. We look like green tea. We look like people of character. But when pressure, you know when you put that tea inside hot bag, that's when you know the difference between green tea and ordinary tea, English tea. Pressure will make the real thing come out. Hot water will make us know which one is green or which one is black tea. The pressure of life comes. How do you fall? How do you respond? That's what builds character. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Help me look at your neighbor. Say, that thing is not against you. Can you preach with me this morning? Say, that thing is not against you. Say, it is for you. Quickly, the next thing I want to speak about concerning how to build credibility is consistency. It is important that you are consistent over time on the things that you are doing. It means that you are stable. There are some of us that we are very good, character good, competence okay, but you are not consistent. You can, we can't take your word as final. You even come self. Today you are happy, tomorrow you are not happy. There's one of my sons I was asking, are you consistent? Let me see consistency. Can I trust that your emotions are not flickering in, up and down, up and down? Up today, down tomorrow. Up today, down tomorrow. Up today, down tomorrow. You can't continue like that. We need someone that we can predict. At a level, you need to be predictable. Can I hear your amen? Consistency over time. When he says he's coming by four, he comes by four. If he's not able to make it, he will say he's sorry. Consistency. Let people know you for that brand. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So consistency helps you stand firm. You are there. When you say, I'm coming by four, I'm coming by four. When you say, I'm going to return it next week, return it next week. Not four years time. Consistency. Consistency. People believe those that are coming. Number five, law of influence is the law of communication. The law of communication. You must understand that God has given you value. Listen to me, people of God. Look at me one minute before I continue this discussion. If you are listening to me today and you are not seeing yourself beginning to influence your community from your house, you are missing the essence of this discussion. Because the objective of this conversation is so that it can change you, make up for your deficiencies, and begin to influence your community. So people start, have to start to know that you listen to something in the month of February. They need to know that something affected me. That when you sit on your table and your nurses are passing in the office, you must know that you were in that office for that time to influence one or two of them. Nobody should go any day of your life without saying thank you. If your day ends with nobody telling you thank you, not because you just bought them cashew, no, that you invested into them. If that day ends and nobody told you a sincere thank you, you have wasted that day. You must be willing to sacrifice something. God will not pour more into you if all you are is a dam. It is rivers that flow. Stinking water stink. I mean, still water stink. You must be a flowing river. So if all I'm telling you today will not inform how you behave with the Uber man, how you connect with the market woman, how you respect the malam by your street, how you converse with your colleague in the office, how you converse with your boss, this is what I want you to affect. You are born for influence. And you can influence anybody, sir. Anybody. Anybody for that matter. Anybody. 
Now hear this. The last law is communication. No matter what you have or what you know, if you don't communicate it, it will die with you. And the essence of influence is so that you can transfer some learning. Listen to me. If you don't know how to communicate very well, you are going to be stranded in how much you can do. You might mean a lot in your heart. A lot. But because you can't talk, you'll be stranded. Communication is very powerful. Listen, this conversation is for people that know that inside them, they are leaders. That inside them, there is greatness. Otherwise, some of us are just hearing this thing for flippant reasons. But hear this. From today, something will change about you in Jesus' name. So how do we start to take communication further? I know you might be looking at it and say, I don't know how to read. Let me tell you something. Number one, the simple way to communicating clearly is to think clearly. Because speaking, I mean, speaking comes from thinking. If you don't think clearly, you cannot talk clearly. So what you spend more time doing is thinking. Let me tell you one of the things that can erode the quality of your thinking. Poor association. Excess time on social media. It will erode the quality of your thinking. I am telling you the truth. So pastor, what can improve the quality of my communication? Reading. Reading polishes the mind. Reading makes a man that is small never remain small. Reading. Readers today, leaders tomorrow. It's a given. It's a given. Reading. The Bible says, blessed is he that readeth. So you read. Now let me tell you a small story of a dictionary man. And this is very important. You read a dictionary every day. When last did you check your dictionary? Let me not even ask you if you have one. Actually, you should have one now, at least on your phone. When last did you check a word from dictionary? Do you know that is the story of this young man from Canada or in Canada? True story. Please, all the stories I've told you today, they are very true and they are verifiable. This gentleman was a cab driver in Canada. And every time he's waiting for his client at the airport, he bought it. That thing hit him one day. Go and get a dictionary. So he bought a dictionary and anytime he's waiting for his client in the airport, he just picks the dictionary and starts to read from A. Before you knew what was happening, he started to speak better English than his contemporaries. Soon enough, you know, dignitary started to prefer his car because of the conversation they have with him from reading dictionary. Soon enough, this man bought another car. Bought a cab company from reading dictionary. Guess what? He bought another cab company from reading dictionary. You know why? Because the people that were talking with him saw that he has a future. We're willing to put capital on him and say, let's get better than this. That the quality of what you know is not good at staying inside this body. From reading a dictionary. You, you are there. What is dictionary? What do you want to do? A dictionary good job. Stay there. There are people that will not agree. Their language is good English. That you understand that word means that you are useful for yourself. You say in a dictionary good job. That's why you can't travel abroad. Read a dictionary at least once every day. Find out a new word. Find out a new word. It will interest you that one of my personal dreams in life is to write a picture. That's the truth. Every day, new words have been added into the dictionary. And you have not even known some. But street words, you know. Like whoosh. Another word from Sabinus. So, look at what it says. So, we, we read here, find out a word every day. Find out, expand your vocabulary. Take some time out to be a better communicator. Now, you cannot communicate well. Are you with me this morning? You cannot communicate well to people without touching their minds and their hearts. For you to be an effective communicator, you must be able to talk to their minds and their hearts. To speak to their minds, you need intelligence. But to speak to their hearts, you need passion. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You need passion. Now, somebody say, I don't need to be I will just say it as it's doing me. Oh, guy, you can't be talking as it's doing you. You need to be intelligent and you need to be passionate. People will not believe you if you are not passionate. Just imagine me saying all this. I'm saying that. So you need to be communicator. Won't you have said what this man is saying? But the passion, last song, you can say, man, I need to hear what this man is saying. Why would you communicate without passion? You are not serious. See what it says here. He said, people will not forgo their dearest pleasures on the, the 
drowsy request of someone who doesn't even appear to know what he's saying. Let me repeat that. People will not forego their dearest pleasures on the drowsy request of someone who doesn't even seem to know what he's saying. Do you, do you agree with me? It's true. Why would I forego my life just because of your drowsy? Just give your life to Christ. Just, I, I will now total my life on this drowsy language. You are not serious. You must sound like you know what you're saying. Praise the Lord. These conversations on these five laws of influence is to bring you to a point where you know that. If, and I know some of us are just listening to this thing and say, Pastor, I know God will help me one day, one day and one day, something will change. No. You must leave this thing with a mind that God is telling me this thing so that I can use them to better my life from now. From now. The next person you meet, you must be intentional. When you are saying, what's your name? Remember his name. Be intentional because you will need that relationship soon. Don't meet people and not take their phone numbers. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. You will soon need that person again. You will soon need the person again. This is your casual way of talking and not dropping something. It's showing that you are not ready for the long line of success. It's success is a journey, not a marathon. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I'm simply saying that if you're in this church, you must succeed. Can I hear your amen, please? Amen. And these things I've told you are vital to your success. They are important. How to influence people intentionally. Hello, my name is Alexander. How are you? What's your name? Ask for his name. Don't just say, eh, good afternoon. You know, somebody came to get a job in my former place of work. As he entered and saw my big boss across her big table. You know what the guy did? Tall man, frustrated. Good afternoon, man. I said, how can you be coming for a corporate job and be frustrated? No matter your qualification, please go. We don't want that kind of spirit here. You will urbanize our office. You know what I'm saying? You just see Madam say, good afternoon, man, because you think it's respect. He did not have capital. Nobody told him, carry yourself right. People know, don't be proud, but carry yourself right. Hello, sir, my name is Alexander. What's your name? Stand straight. Don't be proud. Now, what do you do? I actually do a business of communication. What kind of communication? Human capital. Ah, I'm serious, right? It's Let people talk with you and be happy they spoke with you. No. Mm. 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 It's there, Sha. What's wrong with you? You can do better than that. Sometimes it's in your appearance. Look sharp. Glory to God. I said, What? Look sharp. Look sharp. Don't wear that shoe without socks again. Don't wear that dress without singlet again. You say, It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're looking at that. We're looking at that. The way you are living, you are not living the life. You are not letting life influence you right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm a big boy. No. You must know that God will bring people your way and how you treat them will matter to your next level. Can I hear your amen? Are we blessed by this teaching this morning? Let me close with this last word. Now, hear this. In all of these things I've said, all of them, the greatest part of it is if you decide to use them and start now prophetically. I want you to know that God wants you to build influence as capital for your destiny. You may have come from a poor background, but God doesn't want you to stay poor. There is no excuse for staying poor. You can move from where you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Don't take excuse any further. Let me make this quote and I'll close. Excuses are tools of incompetence. Monuments of nothingness. Those who live by them are not wise. Excuses, they are tools of incompetence. And why didn't you come? Actually, they took light. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Don't excuse yourself. Don't excuse yourself. Don't blame anybody for where you are. Take responsibility. Can I hear your amen, please? And from this discussion, I hope you are blessed. Let's rise to our feet. Amen.